thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I'm so excited to share a bunch of things today. I want to, first and foremost, share my story and read it to you in all the ridiculous animal voices that I like to do. And I want to talk to you about inspiration and writing and themes and, of course, pangolins. Because today, the endangered animal story that I'm going to focus on is pangolins. So first and foremost, uh, what inspires me? my animal friends. I, you can guess because I write animal books, I really, really love animals. And I have almost a bit of an animal problem, I would say, because I have a lot of animal friends. This isn't even all of them. But I thought I'd introduce you to some of them that would fit on the screen. So I have Ripley, my parrot, behind me, who is a really good friend. He tells me when he wants to eat, when he wants to uh, when he wants to go to sleep, he says, nine, eight ripples, his name's Ripley. And he, unbeknownst to me, is endangered. And so he is featured in my third book. Then I have Snuffles and Oreo and Digby, the three dogs. And then my big horse, Jackson. And then my little horses, that's only three of them. There's, there's more than that. So I feel pretty lucky that I have lots of animals whispering, write a story, write a story in my ear every day. So I always thought I would write a story about one of them, and I did with Ripley, but what finally got me writing stories was an eye eye. It started with an eye eye, and I was looking through, I love looking at animal videos and animal pictures, and I was looking, uh, this came up on Instagram, and I thought, what, is, what a weird looking raccoon. That's a really weird looking raccoon. And then I saw below that it was a lemur. I thought, well, I know what lemurs look like, I watched the boom of foo. That's not a lemur. And so I started to look into what exactly an II was. And it's a nocturnal II, endangered as all lemurs are. But what really struck me as interesting is the reason this lemur in particular is endangered is because of a story. And that's my other passion. I have a passion for animals, but I really have a passion for story, all kinds of stories, people's stories, movies, books, everything. I love story. And I feel so strongly about story that the fact that a story was making an animal in danger was really upsetting and interesting to me. So I thought I have to dive into his story. What's his story? And there's a legend that he's bad luck. I think it's because he comes out at night and he's kind of scary and he has creepy fingers and it's the legend is if he points at you that it's bad luck and that the only way to get rid of the bad luck is to get rid of the eye eye. So I thought, well, I'm kind of scared of some creepy animals. I'm really scared of spiders. And Charlotte Webb did wonders for me in me not getting rid of them. So I thought, I think this eye eye needs a story. So people think he's good luck. So I set about writing I, I gets, where did I go? I, I gets lucky. So I wrote a story kind of about his legend and about, about maybe what he could do about it and, and laws. And, and I had such a good time writing that. And I thought, okay, I'm going to put it out there and all the money from it is going to go to help I, I's. So I did that and it was great. And it was one of my favorite things I ever wrote. And then I thought, I wonder, are there other animals? Oh, and the other big thing was that he was endangered and I didn't even know he existed. I thought how terrible that an animal might cease to exist and I didn't even know it existed. So then I thought, I wonder if there's other animals on the endangered list that I've never heard of. So I started looking into it and the next one I came up with was, sorry, I seem to have done something strange here where Things are popping up and blocking my ability to move the slides. There we go. So the next one was a pangolin. I saw a picture of a pangolin and I thought, surely that's an extinct animal. That or something from a film that looks like a visual effect animal. That can't be a real animal from right now. And sure enough, it was a real animal right now and endangered. And so I said about, I thought, okay, there's my second book. I have to write another book. This is becoming a series. And so then I wrote Adventures of a Pango Pup because a Pango Pup is a baby pangolin. And that's the one I'm going to share with you today. But as I was finishing that up, I actually went on a trip to the London Zoo because I thought I want to meet all the animals I'm writing about. And I knew there was an eye eye at the London Zoo. It was a rainy day and I ducked into a hut, couldn't find the eye eye. He wouldn't come out because it was dark or it was dark in there. So I couldn't see. And then I ducked in and I came face to face with 
this. Like, what the heck is this thing with zebra pants? And uh, I have horses, so I like, kind of reminds me of a horse, and a bit of a giraffe and a zebra, of course. And so I spent a long time in this fairly close enclosure with just me and this thing. And then I thought, well, I better read about who I'm making friends with. So I looked down and I read the sign. It's like, it's an Okapi. And guess what? Endangered. So I was like, okay, well, now I have to write a third book. So I said about writing, oh, copy loves his zebra pants. And by this point, I realized I have such a passion for the animals, the stories, and each book raises money for the animal it's about. And the story times, I absolutely love coming to classrooms and through Zoom this way and talking to everyone about it. So it's a, it's a whole series now. And at the end, I will share with you what book is coming up that nobody knows about yet. So there's the three books that we have out now. But now I'm going to read Adventures of a Pango Pup. There was a little pangolin whose name was Pango Pup. He wrote upon his mother's tail and dreamt of growing up. He practiced all the pango ways to keep so safe and sound. Yet mother wouldn't let him leave their burrow in the ground. She said, there is danger everywhere. She said, you are too small. This made him rather angry. So he whacked their burrow wall. She sighed. <sighs> this shows me that I'm right to keep you safe inside. Now, please be calm and let me teach you how to duck and hide. Well, he thought that he was old enough and planned to sneak away. He'd learned his lessons extra well and now deserved to play. He waited for her snoring sounds to know she was asleep, then slipped away, that naughty pup, and didn't make a peep. He crept outside and was surprised. The sun, it shone so bright. See, pangolins, they sleep all day and venture out at night. Because it took him by surprise, he curled up in a ball until he felt a little tap and someone softly called. Oh, Pango Pup, don't be afraid. You're safe and sound with me. Uncurl yourself. We'll have some fun. There's much for you to see. There was a pause and then a puff. His best defense slipped out. A noxious smell from his behind that made the creature shout. Why would you do that, Pango Pup? Don't waste your stink on me. It's good to scare your enemies, but I'm your friend, you see. When Pango peered out from his curl, he spied a tiny deer who smiled at him with so much warmth that Pango lost his fear. My friends all call me Dick Dick Deer, he heard the creature say. I have not seen you here before. Let's have some fun today. So Pango rolled onto his feet and beamed at his new friend. I'd love to play with you outside. This day can never end. They walked and talked and had some snacks. They even had a swim. And Pango met so many friends who smiled and welcomed him. My mother was completely wrong. She said I was too small. This land's as safe as it could be. No danger here at all. Well, Dick Tick smiled and cocked his head. That's not exactly right. I've kept us safe and sound, but now should we go find a fright? Poor Pango Pup. He wasn't sure, but wanted to be brave. He hemmed and hawed for just a bit and then began to cave. Okay, why not? I'm up for that. If there's a fright to find, I'll just keep back and follow you at first, if you don't mind. The two set off and found a tree, which lay upon the ground. The Dick Dick said, it could be fun to sneak and run around. 
this fallen tree and see what sleeps just on the other side. If it's a friend, we'll play with them. But if it's not, we'll hide. As they drew near and slowed right down, both crept on tippy toes. They didn't want to wake a beast. They'd rather he just doze. Be quiet, said the dick dick deer. Let's take a peek around and see if there's a friend or foe. We mustn't make a sound. A pride of cats or pack of dogs would be bad luck today. So follow close behind me now and do just what I say. <gasps> Around that log, there was a fright, far worse than any cat. A great big creature wearing clothes. It even had a hat. The dick dick deer just backed away, but Pango was too scared. He rolled up tight and held his breath in case his rear end flared. Some moments passed and not a sound from dick dick or that thing. So Pango peeked outside his curl and it began to sing. Oh, little tiny pangolin, you rolled so close to me. I think that I should scoop you up and take you home for tea. The giant creature laughed out loud. Oh, 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 oh. then stuffed him in a sack and started off towards its house and didn't once look back. If it had looked, it would have seen the dick dick running near. He rammed his horns into its legs. It screamed. Ah! in shock and fear. And then it dropped the burlap sack, which was the Dick Dick's plan. And Pango Pup came rolling out. Then he and Dick Dick ran. They both were oh so terrified. But Pango's legs were slow. He saw a hole and ducked inside and yelled, Dick Dick, just go! Well, Dick Dick really had no choice. He knew he couldn't stay. The angry thing had found a Jeep. He had to get away. So off he ran at lightning speed. The Jeep was not so quick. And even though both got away, the fright made Pango sick. He waited till the sun went down to creep back to his house. But on the way, he happened by a tiny little mouse. Hello, the tiny mouse did squeak. I'm out alone tonight. My family thinks that I'm too small, but I don't think they're right. Well, all that Pango wanted was to get back home to mom. But this small mouse was way too young. She even sucked her thumb. He'd learned a thing or two that day, felt wise beyond his years. He sat with Mouse and shared his scare and even shed some tears. When he was done, he walked young Mouse back to her family's nest, then found his burrow in the ground and told his mom the rest. He told her why he ran away and that he'd had some fun, but that he still had much to learn and how he couldn't run. His mom, she sat and listened well and held him oh so tight, then placed him back upon her tail. And there he slept all night. The end. But not really, because I like stories, but I also like facts. So at the end of every story, I always do a fact spread. And I include talking about endangered animals, which I didn't really, I'm not going to get into too much today, but it discusses there that an animal is endangered means it's in danger of not existing. And then I have some facts about the animals, but I really like reading things that are fiction, but they also have facts in there. So I buried some pangolin facts in the story that I'm pretty sure you picked up on, but I'll share just in case. So one of the facts was that pangolins live underground in a burrow. So you already know that. 
and that pangolins are nocturnal. And I showed that by having him surprised at the daylight. And then I also, I also find defense mechanisms of these animals fascinating and how sometimes the defense mechanisms are great in the wild, but they actually put them in more danger with people. So the defense mechanisms here, the first one was that he curls up in a ball, which is great because uh, it, animals can't bite. The lions and leopards and things can't bite through, which is good. And then the other one is he's kind of like a skunk. He puts out stinky smells. And the curling uh, works well for the animal predators, but it makes it easier for people to capture them. And unfortunately, people are the number one predator of the pangolin. So the curling up in the ball, not working so well for them right now. So those are just some facts that are in the story. But because I have you here, I thought, let's go through some of the other facts with real pangolin pictures, because I can't include too many pages in the book. But so I thought we'd go through some today. I love this picture so much. So baby pangolins, like we already talked about, are actually called pango pups, which is that not the cutest thing? A pango pup. I just love that. And what else is really cute is they ride on their mother's tail. They really do that. And if you look online, you can find videos of little baby pangolins riding on their mother's tail. And they do that for about three months and then they get off her tail, but they still stay with her for two years. The other kind of cool thing is pangolins walk on their hind legs. So again, if you find a video online of them and see them walking on their hind legs, it really does seem like a creature from a movie. And how they do it is they use their arms and their tails for balance. So it just keeps them up perfectly. And it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Pangolins are great at smelling, but not so great at seeing or hearing. So that doesn't, doesn't do a lot for keeping them off the endangered list. They need to get better, better at listening and seeing the dangers. Okay, here's another really cute picture. And I found it really fascinating. Pangolins don't have any teeth, not even when they're just little babies like this, but even as they grow up, they don't have any teeth. So how do they chew their food? They swallow stones. So the stones go in their bellies and then when they eat their ants and everything, the stones grind up the ants. So they sort of have stone teeth in their bellies. Okay, I gotta get out of the way for this one because this one's pretty funny. Pangolin tongues are sticky but sometimes they're longer than the pangolin's body. I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't want a tongue that long. Pangolins can track their eyes and nose to keep ants out while they eat. So they can stick their head right in the burrow and use their sticky tongue to get all sorts of ants. Pangolins are covered in scales that are made out of keratin. And so this is what's pretty interesting is it's the same material as your fingernails. And the crazy thing is, is the reason they are endangered is because people want them for their scales because they think that that's medicine. But I don't know, I don't think my fingernails would make very good medicine. There are eight different species of pangolins. There's four in Asia and four in Africa. So my story is about one in Africa because the first three books in my series are African animals, but my next three are Asian animals, but uh, I'll share that with you. And uh, music, I love music. So my daughter did a A is for I, I sing along song. So we have that up online too. And uh, I have to say Ripley, my parrot, really, really, really loves it. So you might wanna check that out. We also have um, activities on our website and we update those by the season. So we had a new year's one and we do Valentine's ones. So, and they're all free to download and it's endangered. I see my slide isn't showing properly but it's endangered and misunderstood.com. Uh, and we're always updating the activities because it's fun. We like doing them. <laughs> so, and any ideas anybody has for activities we'd love to hear. So now on to the writing part. I already told you that I love story, huge passion of mine. And I used to think that I loved writing because I loved characters. 
I really, I, I do really love doing characters, but I've since thought about it. And I think that my favorite thing about writing stories is writing with themes. So I just wanted to talk to you about a few of the themes here because a lot of people think you just write with one theme. And I don't, I like to layer the themes in. And so before I start a story, I think about the animals. And I also think about the people that might be reading the books and what themes go with the animals, but also might be helpful in the lives of the people that are enjoying the stories. So one theme that I'm sure you picked up on is friendship and peer pressure. So I wanted to write a story where he makes a friend and I find that a lot of stories that I read, uh, peer pressure is bad. It, like, it, I mean, peer pressure is bad, but peer pressure comes from a very obvious negative place, like do this or else. So, but I found and continue to find that a lot of times peer pressure comes when you're having fun and it doesn't necessarily come from a bully or somebody that's trying to be mean. It might just come from somebody who has a different threshold for uh, maybe has different rules than you, or maybe can run faster than you, or maybe, and they don't mean to be trying to get you to do something you shouldn't do. And so I just wanted to show Dick Dick, he, he has the best of intentions, but his peer pressure does take Pangolin into a situation that he really didn't probably want to be in. And he just didn't feel brave enough to say, you know what, I, I'm pretty happy with what we've been doing. So I wanted to address the theme of peer pressure in a different way. Another one that I wanted to address was mistakes. I find even as adults, when we make mistakes, we are so tough on ourselves. We just, why did I make that mistake? That's just like, I can't believe I made that mistake. Well, I have a theory that mistakes are good. Now I'm not saying sneaking out of your burrow at night is good because it's not. But if you make a mistake, it's like, okay, you've made the mistake. You have to tell the truth and be honest about your mistake, but there's always something you can learn from your mistake. So the key is to not keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. But if you make a mistake, it's like, oh, okay, what can I learn now? What did I learn from that? So he learns and he, in his case, he passes it on to, he probably saved most. Who knows what would have happened? So he learned from his mistake and he passed on what he learned. And they say that when you've been writing for a while, you there's always one theme that's always in your work. And I remember being told that when I was young. And I remember being told that you won't know for about 20 years what your theme is. And I remember thinking, what's my theme? What's my theme? I want to know my theme. And for years and years and years, I thought it was one thing. And it's only recently that I figured out that my theme that I always write with is unconditional love. And I think it's because I feel like that is the magic ingredient in life. And we all have it. Every single one of us have unconditional love from somebody. And no matter what's going on or no matter how things seem, that unconditional love is the magic ingredient that does make everything, anything okay. So that always, whether it's a movie or a book or whatever I'm doing, I find unconditional love is always a theme that I don't intentionally put there, but it pops up, which I think I, 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 that's an okay theme. I'm, I'm happy that that ended up being my theme I like to write with. But I'll let you in on another secret. I thought about when I thought my themes, I'm like, okay, who is this for? What, what, what would help kids the age that are reading this book? But then I thought, wait a minute, it's not just kids, it's parents that will be reading this book as well. So I thought, what theme might help parents? So when Mama Pangolin listens to the mistake that the little pango pup made, she just listens and then she just comforts him and she shows him love and she doesn't get too mad at him that he made a mistake. So that's my, that's my theme for parents is, is just listen to your kids and let them tell you about the mistake they made and let them know it's okay to make mistakes and just learn from it. So there's my secret theme that I snuck in for moms and dads too.
So those are all the African creatures. Ivan just made this for us for uh, a background for our website. So I just wanted to share that because I think it's pretty cool them all being friends together, all the African animals. And, uh oh, I snuck ahead. I said I'd tell you the secret book that nobody knows that's being illustrated right now. So, and it came from a story time like this. So I always say at the end, you'll see I have a question and say, if anyone has endangered animals that they think I should write a story about, then send me an email, let me know. And someone, there was a, I think she was in grade three, a girl sent me an email and said, you need to write about a tarsier. I was like, well, what's a tarsier? Did not know what a tarsier was. So started researching and this is a tarsier. Now, he kind of looks like a character from Star Wars, like Yoda. And I started learning all about the tarsier and they are just amazing endangered creatures. They sing duets to each other so the mate for life and all the way across the forest they sing duets and that's actually how scientists tell how many are left because each pair has a different song so i thought wow that's that's the that that's the starting of a really really great story so this story is going to be pretty musical and how the process works is i write the story and then i send it to ivan my illustrator who lives all the way across the world. We've never even actually met, but we work really well together. So I send him pictures, I send the story, pictures of the main animal, pictures of the best friend animal and other animals, and then pictures of the environment. And then he works on character development. We go back and forth with that. And then he does sketches of the whole book. So where I'm at right now is we've done the character development. So I thought I'd share it with you. I'm waiting for the sketches. But here are the other animals that, so there's a hornbill. He, Ivan loves illustrating birds. So I always try to put birds in it. And then there's a macaque who is apparently the most loving, loving animal. And then a couscous bear. I had never heard of a couscous bear. So I was pretty excited to be writing their story. They're all endangered, all vulnerable. Vulnerable, vulnerable, and critically endangered. So do you want to see, do you want, oh, first I'll show you what the lamb looks like. So these are the colors. It's fun. I always try to do different times of day and different environments so that the books are visually beautiful. And here are the illustrations. So I am pretty excited about these characters. They kind of look like movie characters to me. I want to say thank you to Terry. So can you guys all give Terry a great big wave and a thank you for, thank you so much for joining us, Terry, and for reading. Thank you so much for having me. This is everything you're doing is so amazing. I, I love, I love, love, love everything you're doing. So thank you for making me a part of it. I really appreciate it.